Good morning, as Practitioner FX. Coming at you 6 March. Um, quiet Monday here. You can see FX did not do too much at the open. There's not moving. We're all waiting for Powell. We're all watching rates. US 10 year down at 394. Uh, we said it was stretched at 310 uh, on Thursday. That turned out to be far more correct than we believed, even internally here. Um, didn't like the ISM services and just sort of fell out of bed. We talked about this on Twitter on our little Sunday summary. It just looks like uh, there's just so much skepticism about rates and whether they can hover higher. We could go into this, but we're not going to because it's well documented around the world. You know, your debt is now $31 trillion. Interest rate payments are now approaching $500 billion, which dwarf all other payments on the budget, on the U.S. budget. This is becoming a problem. So um, now it's time, I think, just to look for stretched situations on the tens and buy low ones, right? So you're selling high yields, you're buying low ones. Uh, don't need to rush into this today. I think you'll see this at the open today. There's going to be some dollar selling. There's going to be some rate selling. Certainly, I wouldn't chase tens at three nine four here. Um, shit's not going anywhere today. Powell tomorrow and Wednesday are going to be real vol producers. So just sit tight. You know, keep it in your pants. Be patient today. Um, see what happens. We do have Swiss uh, CPI today at 8.30 a.m. If you have a Swiss position, probably cut it down just a little bit and then try and use the vol um, to get into a better position. Because what often happens with these Swiss um, releases is, you know, there's a whole lot of, like, nothing, right? You know, zips up, zips down, fucks, fucks to the left, fucks to the right. It's like a double fuck, Donnie double fuck. Um... And so you get a chance, if you want to be long Euroswiss, to maybe buy lower ones. Uh, and if you want to get short Euroswiss, which we don't recommend, we like long Euroswiss, uh, just sell high ones. Anyway, um, let's go through these charts real quick. We sold a little bit of stocks here. Just on the technicals, we see this as resistance up here. This sort of 4, 40, 50 to 40, 80. Um, we're not expecting like a massive change in trend day. In fact, we're, we're expecting a quiet Monday here in the world. There was, everyone waits for Powell, but we're short a tiny bit of stocks. Crude is bid. Who the fuck knows why this is so bid? I mean, I know the macro signals uh, demand is strong. Uh, rates are lower. Dollar may turn weaker. All of these things are strong for crude. Um, According to this news here, it's all China. I don't know, it's hard to trade China, right? What the fuck's going on in China? Um, you know, there's, you know, the, on the news feed this morning, everyone's getting pissed off about Taiwan again. Who knows? Uh, Dollar China is actually, they're selling, selling CNH a little bit. Uh, so I don't know about the China shit, but I do know the chart says it's bid. Um, I do know strategic petroleum reserves are way the fuck too low. So, 70 is the floor. At 79, you do nothing. But just pointing it out, maybe you sell some Euro Norway or maybe you sell some dollar CAD. Um, makes sense to us, both of those trades. Look at gold. Talked about how gold held up on Thursday. And it was weird. It didn't make any sense to us as rates approached 410. Gold really never got below um, 1830. In fact, 1830.66 was the low. Bang, big throbber. Back at 1856, this should go higher now. So buying low ones in gold makes sense. Do we chase it after a big throbbing green day? We do not. If Powell turns out to be fake hawkish, some kind of some kind of pigeon, 
not a hawk. Um, that's going to be a green light to buy gold. Retail's long Aussie, um, so be careful, even though Aussie kind of should be higher today. When retail's long, it doesn't mean it can't go up, it just means it has a harder time to go up. RBA rates, uh, 4.30 a.m. Swiss time tomorrow, so if you're young and a spry chicken, get your shit out of bed and uh, watch that. If you're old like me, um, we will not be trading Aussie rates. Um, what else is there? Sterling. Sterling has had it has an interesting chart here, right? So now we have a whole cacophony of lows and on this one low 119 handle. So this is interesting. You have your 200 day at 119.10, bounced off of it. Um, so now this is a break trade down here through 119. So basically you can just be 119.09 entry and so you're looking for bad news or you're looking for change uh, like dollar higher or sterling wildly lower and when you do a break trade like that you don't even have to really know you don't have to know you don't have to actually predict the direction of the dollar you what you're doing is basically saying i know that everyone and their fucking mother is gonna have to sell there because right now the correct position is long cable and so if you have a 119.09 stop down there, you're probably, it's probably never going to trade. But if it does trade, then some fucking weird shit's happening. And usually that weird shit uh, is fear-based. And if it's fear-based, it gets exaggerated. If it gets exaggerated, then you can profit. Uh, this is the mind of a break trader. Most of you don't understand that. Um, which is fine. You know, most of you want to buy cheap and sell high, which can work in, 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 in FX, but there are other styles. Um, you know, we have a whole whole basket of tricks on, on trying to make money in FX. One of them is break trading. Uh, and so just sharing that. Isn't it interesting that uh, the 200-day in dollar-yen held, 200-day in cable held, didn't really come close to the 200 day in uh, euro, dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss doesn't really matter in the dollar basket in general. Um, let's look at uh, the dollar index. Didn't really get close, but we got close in cable and dollar yen, 200 day rejection. Um, we're looking for dollar lower this week, so let's just see. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to navigate. The volatility with Powell. Um, let's just see. Dollars are. This is the one we're least likely to sell, uh, just because how fucked South Africa is um, politically. Uh, it's just problematic. But yeah, nothing to do here. Eighteen fifteen. Mexico, which is kicking everybody's ass. Uh, don't chase this now. Uh, you know, for those of you who are still short through 1950, that, that that's going to turn out to be the trade of the year. Um, or is that, is that 1950 or 2050? No, 1950. Um, that's going to turn out to be the trade of the year. Uh, short dollar max. Anyway, don't chase this here. If this thing moves back up to like... I'm sorry, 1850. God, I gotta wake the fuck up. Uh, 1850 is gonna be a trade of the year. If this thing gets back up to 1830, uh, you might want to give it a little bit of a nudge. Crypto, not doing too much. You know, we have the Mt. Gox settlement, which is gonna create a lot of Bitcoin selling. Um, I think Ethereum's going down just in tandem with Bitcoin. We do have Shanghai. Shanghai fork coming up, which is going to free up the ability to sell um, Ethereum, but I don't think people are going to sell Ethereum. Um, Ethereum's building block fundamental shit. Um, these are buy. This is a buy on dip. So if you're the next trade for for uh, crypto is 
fade the low ones, right? Is there any move down to f below 1500? Between 1500 and 1400, you should buy some Ethereum. Matic, our second favorite. The 200 days, 94 cents. Buy this around one. It is kind of annoying that this thing's down from 156, um, but this is the life of crypto. You know, there's a reason Paul Tudor Jones has 1% of his assets in crypto. If you have more than 1% and you complain about the vol, you can then blow yourself um, because you're not paying attention. Um, so you have this tiny little position that you really shouldn't spend all that much time thinking about. Imagine you have a portfolio and you're spending 80% of your time thinking about 1% of the position. <coughs> Makes no sense. Anyway, take your little pennies uh, and buy some Matic down around one. Um, take your little, your shillings um, and buy some uh, Ethereum between 14 and 1500. No point in beating a dead horse here. Um, Swiss CPI today, you can pick this stuff up down near 99 and a quarter. We like Euro Swiss higher, mainly because we think Euro is going to head higher. Um, let's just see, not, not a super strong conviction on this. So we're just keeping it light, keeping the powder dry, um, getting ready for the meat of this week, which is Tuesday and Wednesday. Good luck out there, people. Talk to you tomorrow.